Stock weapons in Team Fortress 2 are pretty good. In fact, some of them are the best when compared to other weapons. However, one category of stock weapons is so underwhelming that players usually replace them as soon as possible. Stock melee weapons. While they do their job, there is always a better alternative for every single one of them. Because of this, all TF2 players tend to overlook the stock melees. You can find an hour long video about the Pumpson 6000, yet there is hardly any content about the stock melee weapons. That is why today's video is dedicated to all the stock melee weapons in TF2. Let's begin with the first class scout and his bat. It is an aluminum baseball bat that deals 35 damage, but it swings faster compared to the melees of other classes. With a random crit, it can deal 105 damage. The bat is considered one of the worst stock melees, mainly because of the scout himself. With only 125 health and wielding one of the deadliest close range weapons, melee isn't usually a good option for the scout. The scatter gun deals more damage and doesn't take long to reload, and since you don't typically run out of ammo, the bat isn't very practical. Most scout players use their melee for utility purposes. However, if you really want to use the bat, you can still do some funny stuff with it. Its fast swing speed gives you more chances to get random crit. If you catch someone off guard, you might finish them off before they even notice. But again, the same applies to Scar's primary weapons. Next up is the soldier and his shovel. Even though there are no trenches in TF2, the shovel deals 65 damage and with a random crit, it deals 195 damage. Similar to Scout, as a soldier, you don't use your melee that often because the rocket launcher is so effective. Being in the second slowest class, it is hard for a soldier to catch up to enemies, and as a soldier player, you typically only use melee for utility reasons, or if you're going for a market garden, where you rocket jump onto your enemy and kill them with a shovel. And wouldn't you know it, we have a special melee just for that. While the shovel isn't bad, it's pretty boring. If you want to use a shovel, try rocket jumping onto weak enemies to finish them off. Even then, because the market garden exists, the shovel once again ends up in the trash, similar to bat. Next, we have Pyro and the Fire Axe. Fire Axes are typically used by firefighters, but our Pyro is the exact opposite, burning enemies alive. The Fire Axe shares the same stats as the shovel, 65 base damage and 195 crit damage. Unlike the shovel, it can actually be pretty good. As a pyro, you will often be close to your enemies. The WM1 strategy is very effective, but as you play pyro more often, you will find that switching between weapons can deal more damage. The fire axe doesn't have any special attributes, but because of how pyro is played, it gets used a few times. However, this is only a few because there are direct upgrades available. The extinguisher does what the fire axe does but better and even something like power jack with its faster movement speed makes killing enemies much easier. While combo pyro can be pretty good, playstyle never underestimate a pyro who double the m1s either. Once again, the fire axe goes into trash. Now let's talk about the demo man. Of course, a drunk person would go into a fight with a whiskey bottle. It has the same damage as the others and also no special abilities other than that it has a pretty cool taunt. But the bottle is the last thing you want to use as a demo man. You got 4 grenades and 8 stickies. And when you consider the reload times, the bottle or any melee weapon as a demo gets forgotten. If you miss all of your pipes and stickies, you're probably gonna die before you get a chance to use your melee. If you do manage to pull out of your bottle, the chances are you won't be able to hit anyone with it since demo is not that fast. But the demonite is a whole different story. The demonites prefer swords because they have a longer reach, but they might use the bottle for memes and of course the random crits. However, you will most likely choose another melee, making the bottle the only choice for a stock demo man loadout. The reliable demo man who doesn't have the time to consider fighting with a bottle, ultimately tosses in the trash. Next we have the big boy Heavy. Actually Heavy doesn't have a stock melee weapon, he just has his fists. With a 65 base damage and 195 crit damage, they're exactly the same as other stock melees. 
It would be great if they were faster or dealt more damage, as it would suit the heavy more, but as it stands, it, it feels like you're just swinging your fists in the air, hoping a scud runs into them. You know where I'm going with this, heavy is painful to slow. You have a better chance of crouching and looking sad, hoping enemies think you will fr you're a friendly. As a heavy, you're better off using a minigun up close rather than your fists. So the melee slot for heavy is often used for utility. I would love for Valve to make melee heavy an actual playable subclass, but we all know that's never gonna happen. So the fists are also going to trash. Trash, well. Engineer and the ranch on the other hand is a different story. The ranch on its own isn't special, but being able to build an upgrade makes it pretty good. While they're almost direct upgrades of for the ranch, the Jack is undoubtedly the most popular melee for engineer. The stock ranch is just plain and simple, does what it's supposed to do. Let's say you wanted to take it for a spin and hit people with it. An engineer. <laughs> An engineer running at the other team, swinging his ranch is one of the funniest things in TF2. But it's not effective for a simple reason. Engineer alone dies quickly. Maybe if you try the good old distraction center tactic, you might get a few cheeky kills. But in the end, the ranch isn't a good melee. It is just a tool for the engineer to use. As an engineer, you're much better off using your shotgun to defend yourself. And like I said, if you care about using your melee slot for a better tool, the jack is much better. While the gunslinger and the eureka effect allows different kinds of gameplay for the engineer. Once again, the ranch, in my opinion, goes into trash. Medic and the Bone Saw. In a world where the Uber Saw exists, the Bone Saw will never be good. The 25% Uber gain on head is on a whole different level. It is the difference between winning and losing. Meanwhile, the Bone Saw is boring with the same base damage and random crits as the other melees, and nothing else. Let's say you wanted to kill someone with a bone saw, how would that would go? A class designed to heal isn't usually good at dealing damage and this applies to the medic. You really shouldn't be pulling out a bone saw. All of the enemy team will be after you and the last thing you want to do is run at them with your melee out. But what if they're running at you? In, in that case, you could get a cheeky random crit, but a uber saw would do, uber saw would do the same and even better. You get the point. The bone saw goes into trash as soon as you get the uber saw. Next up, we have the sniper and the cookery. For sniper, the cookery is completely fine. As a class whose role is to snipe people from afar, the cookery is rarely used unless there's a spy behind you. In that case, the cookery is pretty good. There is only one thing that holds the cookery back, and that is the Jarata and Bushwhacker combo. Guaranteed crits with these are so great that there is no reason to keep using this stock melee. But what if you're not using Jarata? In that case, yeah, stock is your only option. The cookery is the first stock melee that doesn't go into trash as long as you don't have the Jarata. The cookery is your best option as a sniper. Finally, we have the spy and the knife. On its own, the knife is pretty bad, with 40 base damage and 120 crit damage. But you probably know that you can backstab people with it, instantly killing them. One cool thing about backstabbing is that there is no delay. Usually when you try to hit someone with a melee weapon, there is a delay between pressing your mouse button and it's actually hitting some something. But Spy, being the absolute chad, doesn't obey the rules of physics, instantly killing his enemies like an SCP. Spy does have other options for knives, but all of them come with downsides. Making the stock knife is a good neutral option. Spy stock knife doesn't go into trash either. That was all 9 classes and their stock melees. If I had to sum it up, nearly all of them suffer from the stock melee syndrome, where there are much better options available. The Kukri and the Knife are more viable, but the Jarata and Bushwhacker combo easily outshines the Kukri and the Spy definitely has better options if you're looking for more uh, survivability. Honestly, stock melees do their job and that is teaching the new players. 
the last thing you want is to give a newbie a cool melee and see them running at enemies. Still, I feel like there could be more variations because most of them are the same with the same damage and such. I didn't even mention the fact that without random crits, all of the stock melees become unusable. While making this video, I enjoyed running around and hitting people with stock melees because I get so many ridiculous kills. Random crits are fun but also weird. Every time I hit someone, I was basically rolling a dice, hoping I'll be lucky. That is why uh, another reason why melee combat in TF2 is not viable. Dealing reliable damage matters more than the chance of instantly killing someone. But every now and then, your only chance of surviving might be trying to get lucky with a random crit up close. And in that case, stock melee weapons are kinda good. Yeah, but again, you're better off using your primary weapons and using your melee for utility reasons. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing and liking. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!